Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a start of a new series actually. And honestly, I just thought of this series just a few days ago. We're going to call it Watchlist. And basically the reason why I'm creating this series is that I actually spend a lot of my time just looking at auctions online and just looking at the different watches. And most of the watches that I do look at, I end up not winning because, you know, I usually don't try and put, I try and under offer for the most part, which means most of them you'll never actually see on my channel. But I thought it'd be really interesting just to show you guys some of these watches because I find them really interesting. And so yeah, I'm just going to talk about kind of my reasoning why I like these watches. And I'm going to try and guess the final bidding price. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you what it actually sold for. So while you watch this video, you can kind of make your own judgment on how much you think it'll be worth. You know, you might find that my guess and your guess might be a little bit different, or you might agree with my reasoning. So the first one I have here, this is actually not from Yahoo Auctions Japan, which is where most of the watches will come from. This is actually called FJ Auctions, and this is from a website called From Japan. Now this is a proxy website, so you can bid on items from uh, Yahoo Auctions Japan, but this one is exclusive to the site. So this right here is a Rolex Datejust uh, reference 1601. You can see that it's a two-tone watch. You got the gold bezel with the blue dial. But one thing that I thought was kind of interesting here, so this is just a close-up of the dial. You can see that it's actually, well, it's a little bit dirty right over there at the edges. Uh, even at the Cyclops, you can see there's some dirt building up here. So it's not the best condition. And if we switch to the crown, so I did look online at two-tone date justs with the blue dial and the gold bezel. Most of those online will show that the crown is gold, but this one is silver. So this could just be like an aftermarket uh, crown. It could just be that this watch underwent repairs and whoever repaired it uh, replaced the crown with the silver one. And then there's the other side and then finally here's the back. So again, there's some dirt. Uh, it's probably, it hasn't been the best taken care of overall. And I guess what I'm a bit worried about is that none of these photos show the picture of the movement. So for all I know, there could be, you know, like a dead cockroach sitting in the movement. There could be anything. The condition of the movement could be not too bad or it could be completely awful. And also usually right there on that metal part, which you can't see, but like where usually the strap or the bracelet will hide the metal over there. On the case, there's usually a model number and most or all legitimate Rolexes will have that model number stamped to the side of the case. But none of these photos really show it. It's really hard to tell if there's actually a number there. So for all I know, this could be a fake watch. I'm hoping it's not because this is a watch from Japan and usually watches from any Japanese site the chances of it being fake are a lot lower compared to a Rolex you'll see on eBay. So I'm hoping that this will be a legitimate one. Also, the description does say that it's running from around minus one to minus four seconds. So the watch is at least running somewhat, which is good to hear. Now, if I did buy this watch, I probably would have to get it serviced just because, again, given the physical condition of it, the internals probably aren't that good either. And interestingly enough, the reference winning price is quite low because I looked up online and a date just, even a vintage one or one that's not that popular, you know, it'll still run like a few thousand dollars. So 1500 Canadian to 1700 Canadian seems quite low. But regardless, I did place a bid of about $1,500. I probably won't win it, but who knows? Maybe I'll be able to snag a deal on this little or not little, this 36 millimeter Rolex two-tone J-Just. All right, so the second watch I'm gonna show off is the Omega Speedmaster Reduced. Again, this is from the FJ auction, so most people won't be able to find this online, but I've been looking for a Speedmaster Reduced for actually quite a while now. I placed a few bids on some items, but I've never actually won them. You can see this one, at least the physical condition seems pretty good. I don't see any issues, maybe it's just a few pieces of the dirt, maybe a few scratches, but overall the condition seems pretty good. You know, nothing seems to be wrong with the pushers, no big scratches, anything. The sag, so bracelets will actually start to sag down the longer or the older they are, especially when the when dirt gets in between the links. Uh, bracelets can sag quite a bit, but this one is actually pretty straight, which is not too bad. 
and you can see the case back there. Nothing seems to be too wrong with it. A lot of these older Speedmasters, some of the bracelets are damaged just because of wear and tear, but the bracelet seems to be fine. You can see it comes with a warranty, which is obviously expired by now. I think this stamp shows when this watch was sold. So I'm guessing that this is 2000, August 14th. So it's been quite a while now, but it is nice just to have the warranty as well as the whole box. So the whole package is here. Uh, the only issue here is you can see, it looks like someone almost like bit a chunk out of the metal, but overall not too much damage here. So I am interested in this watch as well. The reference winning price, again, similar to the Datejust, I feel like this is a bit too low. I have seen Omega Speedmaster reduced on auction websites in Japan. It's usually around $2,000, depending on the condition and also depending on if it has the papers and intact ba bracelets and stuff like that. So, you know, I actually think this is probably worth at least $2,000, but I just bid $1,500. I bid slightly above the minimum range of the reference winning price. I don't know if I'll actually win it, but I do think it does look pretty good in terms of condition. Um, the, I think the accuracy stated like plus four to plus six, which obviously that doesn't mean that the watch is in good condition. There could be other issues with the movement, but overall seems to be pretty good. So yeah, hopefully if I can snag a Speedmaster for $1,500, that's a pretty good deal. So next up, we're going to finally switch to Yahoo Auctions Japan, and I'm going to be using the proxy site buy.jp. We have the Seiko Lord Marvel 5606-8100. Looks like this was made in 1975, so that's about 50 years, a little bit less than 50 years. And the reason why I really am into this one is the dial color, which you can see better here. It's kind of, I call it like a honey dial. You know, it's not like yellow, like a sunflower, and it's not... It's sort of like a goldish yellow, but I think honey is a really good way to describe it. So yeah, it looks like this is a vintage automatic watch. You can see at the edges, you can see how the light's kind of distorted and the picture's also distorted. So this is a multifaceted crystal. And at least from this picture here, it looks like there's not that much damage uh, to the watch overall. Seems like the dial has no issues so far, and you can see that there is the kanji date. Here's another picture of it again. No obvious flaws I can see here. I think the vintage style of these watches is you can see that the, the case is more curved. It's not very sharp. And I'm actually not a fan of that, but it's just kind of how the style was back then. So I guess I can live with it. Here's a picture of the movement, which is always nice to see. It's always nice when the seller puts a picture of the movement. Just so you know that this is a psycho movement, you can see that there's no dead cockroaches or anything inside the movement. And I think in the description, it did say that they performed basic maintenance. So lubrication, cleaning, things like that. So that's always good to hear. That way you don't have to, you know, scramble to find parts to fix it. And the bracelet, similar to the Omega Speedmaster that I mentioned earlier, it's a really good condition considering the age. I don't know if this was the bracelet that it came with, but you can see in the bottom there, it is Seiko LM. And yeah, the condition seems really good. And here's another picture of it on a stand. And here's another picture in a different angle. I think if I were to get this watch, it, would, it wouldn't be the easiest to read. I think it's kind of like the, the Seiko Alpinus, the Saab 017, which had a green and gold pattern. I don't know if this would actually be easy to read in daylight, just because the gold background might make it difficult to read. Right now, the price is $44 Canadian. I can't find too many of these models online, but my guess is that it'd be probably around like 200 to 300 Canadian dollars, maybe around 300 Canadian dollars, because the ones that I saw online were around 200 US dollars. So yeah, I'll probably place a bit on this, maybe definitely not over $300, maybe something like 200, $250, but yeah, I think I really like how they perform basic maintenance. It's just nice that when I get this watch, it's not going to be like completely unusable. All right, so now it's time for the big reveal. How much did the Rolex Daychest end up being sold for? Well, I placed a bid for 1500 Canadian dollars and the final winning bid was 5,000 Canadian dollars. 
So that's way over what I bid on. And in my opinion, that's actually way too much. I don't think this Rolex is worth that much. Uh, given the condition, given that the fact that there's no bracelet included, and we don't know what the movement looks like inside. So let me know what you guys think, but I think that 5,000 Canadian, which is about 4,000 US dollars, that's way too much for this piece. Moving on to that Omega Speedmaster Reduced, I put a bid in for 1,500 Canadian dollars, and I should probably mention that these auctions on From Japan, these FJ auctions are sealed bid auctions, so I actually can't see what other people are bidding until the very end. So again, I placed $1,500 Canadian and the final winning bid was $2,500 Canadian dollars, which is about $2,000 US dollars. So I think that's still, it's still cheaper than if you bought an Omega Speedmaster from watch forums or on eBay. I think the average price is sitting around $2,500 to $3,500 Canadian dollars. So, you know, it's on the lower end of things, but definitely my bid was an under offer. So unfortunately I did not win this Speedmaster. All right, and finally for the Seiko Lordmatic, the final winning price was 282 Canadian dollars. So I was actually really close with my guess of 300 Canadian dollars and I actually won this auction. So I'm really looking forward to getting this watch and reviewing it with you guys. So that's it for episode one of watch lists. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you were interested in what I had to say about these watches. And again, I'm really looking forward to seeing this Lord Maddock on my wrist. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.